How's it going, Twitch and YouTube? It's Stay Weird 1993, or if you know me off YouTube, Stay Weird 1993 vlogs. Welcome back to our stream. We're gonna be doing some more Destiny 2 as there's some more content that's been added in today. So um, let's just get to it. We'll do some decryption first because the engram's got quite a high ceiling for a level. Don't think it's as good. Oh, it's actually one better, but it is a submachine gun and it's. Ah, uh, sorry, someone's turned a light on. Um, so, we'll just wait for that then. Um, we'll carry on. No, it's fine. I understand. Um, so, we've got a submachine gun here, which is actually one better than our exotic, but I don't want to use that. We're joined by Lord Arbiter tonight. How's it going, Arbiter? Uh, it's going alright. Going good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Been up to much today or just chilling? <laughs> uh, nothing much. Taking a couple of days away from that one online. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it's just it's like I'm taking a short break from Warcraft at the minute. Um, I'm taking a couple of weeks break intentionally just because I was feeling I've got a lot of characters to level and I was feeling super burnt out. Well, it's not that. It's because um, the new pilot skill will be consistently battered. Oh, is it? Is it? They've, is it? Have they changed it massively or something? Or it's um. So it's like some change. They made it so it. So the pilot skill rating is now player base, not XP, not XP base. So it's based. If they've changed how it's accumulated. Yes, yeah, so they basically made it so. Um, so it's not based on experience, which would be a better display of, like you know, games played and actual experience in the game. Yeah, so they basically made it so you they basically made basically made it if if you do bad, you can no longer blame the team. I suppose that's good in its own way. Like, if you suck at something, you shouldn't be able to blame everybody else. Yeah, but the problem is, I've been sat at TFP so long. And, um... And I've come... And I've not been... And I've been playing terribly since this new system's been introduced. Ah, uh, have you? And, I've, and I'm nearly back at tier 4. I suppose it reminds me of uh, if you remember Halo's ranking system, you know the ranked play, where if you yeah. lost a match, you actually lost a rank. You know, on the ranked playlist on Halo Three, yeah. if you lost yeah. a match, you lost a rank. So, competitive was really competitive. Do you know what I mean? Like you was yeah. you'd be sat there thinking, "Shit, if I lose this Lone Wolves match, I'm not going to get my Brigadier. I'm going to go back down." And I, it used to annoy the hell out of me because I'd be there playing Halo Three, and I'd be thinking, "I'm really good at Lone Wolves, but I could just get some like sweaty MLG tryhard in my next game. That's gonna mean that I can't progress and I lose a shitload of XP as a, a direct result of this tryhard." Yeah. And I thought to myself, "I don't want that," <laughs> but like at the time, like I was trying to rank up. Um, and I remember I had this one match where I was so, so mad because I lost and it, I went back down a skill level and yeah. I was one skill rank away from the Brigadier rank. Oh, yeah. And it had taken me forever to get to like rank, what is it, 39 or something? Or it was or 44, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, I never got to, I never quite, I never got to general at that point. Um, my friend did, but he did it through um, arranged. He, he managed to arrange somehow that it, that basically he just fell on it. That his mates were, he fell into a game where they they were they were doing boosting. Oh god! So he managed to get it so that it's like you know when if you remember the Halo Three days where you had the katana and the security helmet yeah. as the uh, if you got all the achievements in the game. Yeah. Now I managed to get all the achievements in the game. Um, wow! Um, 
that's not completely correct about your tunnel armor. Oh, is that a thousand gamer score? Yeah. And then the because, sc- I got, because I got hurt because I got hurt in a thousand. Yeah, I was gonna say like before they added the vidmaster achievement, it was you had to get all the base achievements. The only way to get a thousand in the original Halo Three without any of the expansion content was you had to get all of the original achievements. Which is when I acquired yeah. it. Now, um, no, no, that's still that's still wrong. I don't know. It, it's like by the end of it, I I remember I'd, I I was a completionist. I had to have every Halo Three achievement. Uh, that will um, it would the katana armor would just a thousand, thousand and the games go in general. Would the, sec- still don't. Was the security helmet the one that was all the achievements then? Probably. Because I got a thousand games for Halo 3 through the DLC achievements as well, not all the original. You see, that's what I mean. I did my thousand game score in the original. I couldn't get all the original achievements because I couldn't get two kills in one spot and lay the shot. I got that completely by accident. I couldn't get that. I got it completely by accident on Valhalla and I remember it like it was yesterday. I was playing Lone Wolves. We were on a... We were on a match on Valhalla, and it was and it was Lone Wolves. I remember that much. Um, and I was aiming up Spartan Laser for this dude who I could see in the base, who was going for the sniper. Yeah. Now it just so happened that as he went to grab the sniper, someone jumped up behind him to assassinate him. <laughs> and so I got them both, and I just sat there and froze and went, "What? <laughs> what? Did, what just happened?" And then uh, realised, and I was like, "Ah, <laughs> let's have a look here." So the pyramid first arrived above Io, and the travel did nothing. And now they darken our skies. But yeah, basically, you sp- right? I'm taking a couple of days away until the next challenges appear because, because um, yeah, because I've got so close, so down, so much, and I'm so close back. Going back to tier four, which is just below the average player. Mm. But it's actually get, but it's actually get, it's actually me, it's actually getting me down. Well, yeah, I, I kind of get what you mean. Like it, w- it would irritate, it would irritate me to a point where I'd be like, well, why do I want to play this? You know what I mean? Because after all this time with the old system, I actually thought I was a somewhat decent player. And then you've ended up in a situation where you feel like you haven't, you're not, you, you feel like the game's making, implying that you're not a decent player despite the fact that you've logged plenty of time. Yeah, and now this, and now the game's just like. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, you're on, yeah, you're on the fast track back to the low average player. How do you feel? That's frustrating, man. Um. <laughs> I hate stuff like that. That that's what used to annoy me about ranked Halo as well. Because yeah. you could have like two bad games of Lone Wolves, you know, ranked multiplayer. You could have two bad games where you don't finish in the top two or three. Two yeah. games where you because what used to happen to me is when I got into the upper ranks, so we're talking past sort of colonel, um oh, yeah. you used to get paired up with generals and it's like, well that's not fair because mm. they're ranked fifty and I'm thirty five. Well, that yeah. isn't fair. Like, See, the reason the reason it got changed was because tier threes were getting paired with t- their match with, against tier one pilot rating school tier one players. Yeah. So that's why they changed it. But I think they've just gone all wrong about it. I used to just find it so aggravating, man. Like I'd I'd be I I'd have done nothing wrong, and I've just got paired with some MLG tryhard, right? And I would then be penalised for it. I would then end up in a situation where I'm losing ranks like faster than I can say whoops because the game is pairing me with these these tryhards. Yeah. Oh, there's new arrival locations on Destiny 2 in this weekly reset. <laughs> so, we can do... We've got interference as a quest. And we've also got the quest here I need to go and speak so there's two quests on the arrival one now 
Yeah, so one of the reasons I've just taken a few a few days to get just to pull myself back together so I can actually start trying to play properly again. Well yeah man, you've gotta like make sure you're still enjoying playing the game because what's the point in playing the game if you don't enjoy it? It's like I'm not one of those people that will play a game that I'm not enjoying. So not because I'm a quitter or anything like that, but for example, it's like when I quit Yu Gi Oh! It was due to life stuff. I didn't quit exactly. I went on a hiatus. I quit that due to life stuff because I was very busy and was having a difficult patch of my life. Yeah. And then, on top of that, I didn't enjoy the meta whatsoever at that time. Mm -hmm. The meta was pissing yeah, me yeah. off. Because at yeah, the time... You, yeah, it, it, you'll get pissed off at this one. Oh, I will, but probably not to the same magnitude. This one, it was more, <laughs> if I see another Zodiac player, I'm going to cry. Oh no, you don't see Zodiac anymore. Zodiac died ages well, ago. Well, wasn't it when Dryden got hit? That it died? Yeah, it died that died ages ago. I remember, that was like 2017, because that's when I took my hiatus. Um, and you see, I've looked at the current meta in terms of, you know, watching matches and stuff. And this meta doesn't anger me as much as the old one did. Like this you one. Say that, you say that now. I mean, like, look. Going up against stuff like, you know, you've got your Alter Geists, you've got um, there's still, you know, Rogue decks running. What I like about the one thing I do appreciate about the current meta is, yeah, there's some decks where it's like, yeah, these are tier zero, right? But also on top of that, there is, I feel like there's a little bit more wiggle room in the current meta for some Rogue decks to get a, get a, get its moment in the sun. Yeah, um, because you killed, yeah, because you killed ABC off. Well, that's, I mean, that's a step in the right direction. No, that's stopping stopping the wrong direction. Cause that's one of the many was one of the many decks that was keeping the matter uh, uh, like budget player friends. See, I didn't like ABCs anyway, but it's like for me, the, it's like people. Mm. I I don't. I've never been there and gone. I'm going to play a meta deck because I don't want to turn up to an event and everyone and play the same deck as fifteen other people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's just not how I do things. And I never have done things that way. That doesn't mean I don't win. It just means that sometimes I have difficult matches against, say, your tier zero deck that there's 15 people playing because if, if they OTK you, then that's it. Yeah, plus you're having a family. You don't really have the bank account to do that anyway. No, I have a, I have a, I have, I have a budget for it every month, and it's reasonable. Um, but it's not like I'm not gonna. I can't pay like four hundred quid for a deck of cards. You know what I mean? Like it's stupid. Um, it's like the decks I really like playing at the minute. For example, is the Monarch deck I put together. Um, the Necros deck, which has been really annoying but funny. As in, like that's another bullying people deck. Um, because you just keep ritual summoning, and then you, and you keep ritual summoning, then you just keep negating like. There's an, okay, you can't use your extra. Okay, you can't summon that. Okay, just get rid of those two cards for me. You know, it's like it gets your opponent to a point where like, well, can I do anything? Well, no. I don't think you. I don't. So I don't get what does this deck do? This deck just says no and then beats down. It's like, and then I zaborg and then destroy eight, their extra deck, and then I continue ritual summoning. Yeah. So it's like you know, it locks out the extra deck and that's kind of the objective. You know. It locks out the extra deck um, and stops your opponent from getting the big plays off. So stops them link summoning stuff like that. Yeah. Which is like that means you can't link you can't link cross me one turn if I get Unicorn out turn one kind of thing. Um, or you can't um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, you can't Appaloosa me if I've already got Unicorn on the field. And if you get rid of Unicorn. If, if I've gone out, so for example Necro's Cycle to get Unicorn back then I drop that onto the field and then your Appaloosa is ne negated. Yeah. So it's like, even if I can't get over that card, if it's negated then that means that it doesn't get the the effect to stop me doing my other plays. Because then what I would do is, yeah. you do the Unicorn effect, because on that turn then, because that's when that's summoned it negates the cards, then you would get rid of that You'd go into maybe a rank four play, like yeah. Abyss Dweller. Then you'd use your other um, your other cards, 
in hand because yeah. by this point you should have searched out enough rituals to go into a backup ritual monster with like kaleidoscope or something use kaleidoscope to then get Brianak um, get Brianak and a unicorn on the field again Brianak will just get rid of some cards while unicorn negates the extra yeah. deck monsters which means that in effect you should be able to negate everything then just pick what you're getting rid of because then they can't go well when this is destroyed it gets this effect I'm like well no it's an eff effect but already been negated pal it just goes. It just, it just dies now. Goodbye. Oh yes. Oh yeah. I saw you um, Nordic deck video. Yes. <laughs> I've been playing. Yeah. And I've already um, found a loophole in your defensive system, and I found or they found a loophole in your uh, defense. That's fair enough. As I say, I've only um, that's only the first draft of the deck. I mean, I'm probably going to be looking at things like Called by the Grave, Dark Rule, or No More, um, to uh, just give the deck a bit more security, maybe drop a few hand traps in there. Um, so you know that solemn card you're playing? The authority, yeah. Yes. It, state, it, sta it, it has the same problem as many other cards do. It states target. Yeah, I have to target. I have yeah, to target my Nordic Vi monster. What does, what does Vadyaki and Dark Hole do? It doesn't target. Tar but <laughs> if you declare Odin's effect, it can't, it can't. It's not. It's not. Can't be targeted. It's this card is unaffected by spell cards. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you can't declare it during your opponent's turn, though. You, can you? Uh, no. Well, it depends, because I think. Is it? Let me just read. I'll double check, because it just depends on the wording. This one here is. It's during my main phase, but if it's destroyed during your turn, I can banish a Nordic and resummon it and draw a card. Yeah, so someone just has to like ban so again called by the grave in that situation. Yeah, banish, yeah, or banish your entire graveyard and the Nordic monsters. That's fine. I mean, I, no, I get that, and that's that's a, that is a loophole. But then if they can't prevent me going back into Golvig next turn, then Odin's then there's a second Odin. <laughs> if they can't prevent that, and if they can't prevent that, that kind of locks down that you can't target Odin. Uh, and and Golvig can't be targeted, but as I say, Raigeki does get through that. But Raigeki gets through a lot of things. Um, yeah, that's why it unbanned it. Yeah, because Raigeki is good for that. It's like Dark Hole gets through a lot. It does the same as it does the same. It doesn't target. It's just destroy all monsters. Yeah. Which is why I don't understand why people don't run Dark Hole. Because they don't want to mute them on board. That's fine. I mean, well, the thing is with me. I look at Dark Hole and think, if I have this in hand and my opponent's got bored and they can't negate this, if they if if I know they've not got a negate, or I could drop Dark Hole to bait out someone's potential negate for a later play. Yeah. Like it's like if they want to solemn the Dark Hole, that gets rid of a solemn, which means I can then go into a bigger play without worrying about the solemn. Hmm. But then, of course, you're worrying about hand traps. But again, it just depends on how you're playing. It's how aggressive you want to play. Yeah. It's like with the Nordic deck, it is an aggressive deck, which means that the defense is a bit lacking. Uh, it's quite aggressive. That's why. Uh, it's like it, it kind of goes for this big play. And there's yeah. multiple ways to make the big play. The only problem, like you say, is that... Um, of course, authority does target, and of course, Odin's immunity isn't during your opponent's turn. But yeah. that's but that's when you do something like um, Moon Mirror Shield, which I do have a, a run a one of in the deck just to prevent just for a bit more additional protection, so it can be targeted. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah, it's like the reason that I put that mo one copy of Moon Mirror in there is I'm thinking. The, I, there is a loophole here where if I if it's not during my turn and they can stop me summoning, then I've lost one Odin. But I still have two Thor, two Loki. You know, there's other things I can go into. Uh, and again, there's always the option of using the Golvig to get the to get a uh, Boral Sword with its three summons. Also, there's another loophole we've missed. Which one's the other loophole? Ma uh, Necron. Macrocosmos. Oh yeah, to banish the grave. That's true. That's true. Banishing the graveyard, but then with Golvig, you can still use its effect with Macrocosmos in effect because you banish three. You banish three, so you don't. It doesn't Macrocosmos because it doesn't 
Golvig's initial effect doesn't have anything to do with Grave. Yeah. Uh, Go the thing, yeah. The problem is, uh, is the um, once you once you lose your graveyard, that's set. Half your deck's gone. That's true. It just depends again on, on the the level of aggression that you're playing with. You could always side in um, cards that get your banished cards back. Yeah, because uh, you're out of graveyard, you can't resurrect your big Nordic monsters. That's true, um, which is why I run multiple copies of all three, in case I'm against a deck that's going to banish as soon as they hit grave. What's so? Um, so, yeah, for, exactly. <laughs> so, my thoughts were, if someone banished my Odin, what would I do? Okay, well, I'd use Thor next, which negates monster effects. And if they banish yeah. the Thor, then you use the Loki. That's why they can't respond with they can't respond to that card with a trap card. Um, so yeah. they can't activate traps in response, um, which is handy in certain situations because there are still people that run things like Dimensional Prison, especially in those kind of macro decks. You know where they're going to try and banish your monster when you attack. Yeah. Then you go, well, Loki won't let you do that. You know, Loki says no. Yeah. Loki says we're not doing that today. <laughs> Look, uh, it's like oh, mirror force. That's fine, but Loki's not affected by mirror force. You know. Um, in the same way that I like Odin for that, because you declare that, um, you can hit, o you attack with Odin. They go mirror force. Okay, but Odin doesn't get destroyed because it's unaffected by spell and traps during my turn. See, that's the problem with the monsters. The monsters, though, you have to declare, which means there can be a chain afterwards. There, there is a chain after. So if you declare that effect and somebody negates it at the at that point, you're right. Um, it just depends on again if you summon it and then use solemn authority, then that's the way you add that protection to it. Yeah. Because um, then it means that the, it's not affected by card effects. I believe. So let me just double check the exact wording on authority. Just double check it because again I know yeah one minute. I think as long as um, cannot be targeted by other card effects. Yeah. Which is fine because then if you've managed to get that play off and they haven't really put thought into oh crap I need to get rid of that because that's going to make it difficult to get rid of Odin. It's not It's not targeting, it's just this card is unaffected. Mm. So it's unaffected by other card effects. So that gives it that immunity. So they have to get rid of authority first. And then, they, and then what they have to do is if they want to target Odin, they have to get rid of the authority. And then they have to get rid of the uh, Golvig. Because Golvig says you can't target Odin while it's on the field but while yeah. it but while it points to something that can't be targeted either which this is what i mean it's like yeah sure there are ways around it but if your opponent doesn't have an out it's going to be really annoying for them because they've got what if i've seen if i've had, if I've had experience we uh most decks now do yeah about so everything that's the thing yeah and it's like that's <laughs> what you're playing on the assumption is that yeah, they've got an out for everything, but what you want to do is get them to use their out before before you make the play. So you want to try and bait out as many of those as you can, which is which is why I run a lot of monsters. People say you don't need to run that. It's like, so, so why do you run three Valkyrie? Because if I summon one Valkyrie and they negate it, then that means I've got two Valkyries somewhere in deck that I need to get access to. If I can't, and then that means if they bait three Val, if I bait three Valkyries, then I can still go yeah. into Golvig off each of those plays, which means if they just if they negated all of those, that's six out, that's six negates they've already used, and then at that point, you've still got Golfax, and you and you can and you can still make Thor with Golfax. Yeah. So and you can also still, if you've got access to a Golvig, um, if you haven't used all of your Golvigs, you've got access to Boral Sword as well, because because it. Because that way you can get those three monsters on the field. Three, so then you have three effect monsters, um, which would be the which is of course the requirement for for Boral Sword. But obviously you have to send Golvig as well. 
Um, yeah. But again, if you're wanting to use the Boral Sword play for the intended use, then you're not too bothered about losing the Golvig if you've got another one left. I would, I would say, and this is from a prof more prof slightly more professional opinion, mm -hmm. is don't if if you're going to use Boral Sword. Yeah, I would say use it as a final defense measure like if you're about to lose a duel but you can still make it yeah exactly it's literally there just if it's like right okay there's no way out of the situation the only thing i can do here is make this and hope for the best um, that's only where you're that's only where you're using it properly in that deck yeah you don't use it offensively you use it defensively see uh, most decks can use it offensively the thing is yeah that's that's true but it's like i suppose the way that the deck is structured and the things that it does means to me that using it offensively wouldn't be the smart way to play it. Not in the Nordic deck, no. Especially when you've got other things that you can play offensively, i.e. Golvig, Odin, you know. So because when you've got that loop of getting Golvig to get Odin, and then you've got Valkyrie, yeah. if, they've got, if they stop the Golvig play, you've still got the Valkyrie, which is still one turn Odin. And then if you play it right, where Golvig says, "Oh, you have to banish these mon all these monsters to to get your play." Um, um, to g is it, oh, you have to banish three. Well, if you just banish Alvis, um, then that means w if you banish Alvis, you send a monster off the field, and then what you do is you send two. So you send Alvis as well. You, Alvis counts as four stars, and then you send two from deck. Sorry, and then you can make Odin or Thor or mm. Loki. Um, just if you if you happen to have Alvis in hand or Alvis on field off off the back mm. of the uh, Golvig play, yeah. which means that you can reduce the cost of that Alvis. Where you, instead of banishing three, you basically just banish one. Because you can banish up to three, but if you banish if you just banish Alvis, then you've then at the cost of one card, you've made Odin. Which is mm. like, again, there's some really there's some if you get the right hand turn one with that deck it opens really strong now that depends on if you were now that depends on if Russell actually bricks your deck just so it can read oh if it's well that's fine because if when Russell's done trying to intentionally brick the deck I will still shuffle it when it comes back to me and you can do that especially if you believe somebody's stacking uh, well, especially if you know he's stacking, which everyone knows he does. <laughs> and he just denies it, doesn't he? He denies it. He denies it to himself from being banned from his opponents, yeah. But if anyone catches him doing it, he would get banned. <laughs> no, because no, there's not enough proof. That's the thing. It's like, that's why if, if whenever I'm playing against somebody who I know has done that kind of stuff, and there's been a few people who I've come um, across... Yeah. The only way you could get enough proof is if you had like a little secret camera recording, like recording him, uh, recording every, everything he does during the duel. That's true. Um, <laughs> but then the, I suppose the countermeasure to him do, bricking the deck is when he gives it back to you, shuffle it some more and then cut it. That way, you know, he, he can't stack it against you because then you've shuffled it again. <laughs> yeah, but then he'll just stack his deck to make sure he still wins anyway. That's true. That's true, but you can you can only do what you can do to prevent it. For example, you can only prevent so much, and then the rest of it's down to just making smart decisions to make make him feel stupid. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I've tried that approach. It it doesn't work. The problem is with it's like if everyone. So is that something that everybody says? Oh, Russell stacks. My proof people have seen him. I'm going to say, is it, is it something that happens every time he plays? Every time he goes down to locals, yeah. I wonder why he feels the need to stack. Because, does he top? Uh, he, gets, he doesn't top, but he gets fairly high up now and again. I was going to say, it's like the only reason mm -hmm. that he should, the only motivation he'd, I'd consider him to have for stacking would be if he was any good at the game. I've definitely, I think I've definitely seen him top 15 before a few times. He's ma making the top 15 is, that's fine, but I just think that it's not, 
for me at least, the way I look at it is that if he if he's stacking, then it's just bad sportsmanship, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Especially when his kids try little kids are trying to get into the game as well. Yeah, but obviously he's got he's obviously got no interest in how those kids play or what they the, those kids do. He doesn't care. He doesn't care how other people feel after he beats them. Well, I just think that, well, from what I've heard of other people as well, like he's quite patronising about the whole thing. Oh, you don't even know. You don't know half of it. He starts criticising people's deck choices and stuff. It's like that's fine, but they've made that deck themselves. Just leave them alone. You don't know the half. You don't know the half of the story about how criticising he is after he beats you. Know? But that's the thing. For for bad for bad conduct, you can still get banned from a tournament. Get the proof and getting banned. Well, that's I what I mean. But it's like, if, if, I, would, I, would, I would love to see that. If enough people report him for like rude behaviour, then he can get a strike and get kicked out of a tournament. Do you know what I mean? Mm, like, because yeah. if, if you take offence to that behaviour, then the judges and the people around there do have to act. Because otherwise, it's not fair. Because then oh, there's that. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's even criticised my ABC deck as well. I'm a monarch deck. It's criticised a few of my decks. It's like there's a difference between being <laughs> constructive and being like, oh, what I do here to make this more consistent is. That's fine. But then it's like depending on what how it's said. It's like it's like there's somebody I heard this story about somebody who went to a YCS. Yes. Um and there was somebody who whenever he beat somebody was handing out those dark beginning one tip <laughs> cards. Um it wasn't oh, locals. No, I don't know who that would have been then. It w it was it was just a story that I heard. Yeah, but that was good. Yeah, but you've been doing that good sportsmanship. You've been doing that good sportsmanship. Not not like what Russell would do. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's one of those things where I think that. Um, he wasn't doing it out of good sportsmanship. This guy was doing it to troll people. Oh, that's even worse. He then. was handing out the tip cards to say, you're bad, here's a tip card from a pack. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm. That, no, that's just terrible. You can't do that. Oh, he got kicked out of the tournament. I should think he did. When people realised what he was doing. And how many rounds did that take? I think he did it three times before people were like, this needs to stop. Yeah, but see, people sat around him, at least criticising how bad people are. Well, apparently he didn't criticise them, he just shook their hand, and as he shook the hand, he left them a tip card. Nah, that's bad. It is bad. You can't. You can't do that. No, that is bad. That is really bad. <laughs> that's like saying, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You suck ass. You suck ass. The duelist needs a tip card. And it's like, here's the thing. It's like, if you get, it's like the problem with Konami is that, like, obviously, um, they have to try and be fair to everybody there. But then, if people are getting effectively picked on, then you know. Yeah. Um. It's like they have to do something about it. And money don't care, they just want money. I mean, at the tournaments, they have to care. Um, because otherwise, they, you know, obviously, people could be. There's things that they could, people could demand their money back, you know, for. Um, it's not an official tour. Technically, it's not an official tournament if it's not adjudicated in a fair and equal environment. Um, so, as a direct result of that criticism, you could end up with some. with, with, with them being in a lot of trouble, sort of with, like, false advertising, etc. Fair and even environment, fair and equal environment. Have you seen some of the decks that go to ICS? You see, a deck, a deck that's, that's, that's a deck that's built is still <laughs> considered fair and equal because that's that's the player choice. It's like they have to create an environment which doesn't segregate anybody based on any other reason than if you're you know if 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 you're winning or losing effectively. Uh, how the hell do I kill this thing? I've been fighting it for like ten minutes. It's, it's last, one I ran, last one I went to, I had I been paired against three Thunder Dragon decks. What, a YCS? 
The last one I went to when I was doing it, playing ABC, yeah. When was the last YCS? Can't remember now, but it was that um, hotel. Yeah. Oh, the. Oh, if it's Ladies Bridge. The Victoria Hotel. Yeah, we were there. Ah, yeah. That's when we were there. That's quite a while ago, that. <laughs> yeah. How do you I kill. Just, I... How the hell do you kill this thing? Hang on. <laughs> There's got to be a way to kill it because. Basically, it's a knight called the Envoy of Savathun. Yeah, I can see. And it drops this shield every time it gets to its quarter percent health, but I don't think I can't think of a way around it. Maybe you have to wait for it to drop it. No, because every time it puts the shield down, it regenerates. Oh, mm -hmm. well, is there something you have to wait? I, I have no idea. Like something in the area. That's what I'm looking for. Is it? Is it this? No. Um, see, he's got this thing glowing around his head and his back. So if he's got some, maybe that's it. There. If he's got some glowing around his head, then maybe that's it. That's what I thought it was, and I was aiming for that last time. But if you watch this, it doesn't actually have. It. That's what he does. See? Yeah. And you can't hit him inside that shield. He's just immune. Um, I'm trying to think. There must be something. Yeah, there's something you may see. I mean, there's this rune up here, but you can't shoot it. Maybe you have to walk in his shield. I'm going to say, you can't. When you walk in, he's still immune. So I'm going to. I'm just going to run up here because I. <laughs> I don't want to say I it's bugged because I don't think it is. I think there's a trick to it. Maybe you need my four guardians. Now you see, it's a single player mission. Oh, is it? Yeah, this is a single player, it's a quest. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Because I've tried using my super and he still pops the shield. Hmm. Maybe you need like a weapon in the area or something. It's weird. I'm just going to have a look to see if there's any other weapon I could potentially apply that might be better in this situation. The sword's not going to make a difference. I don't think anything is. I don't know how you kill The fusion then. rifle. I'll try it with the fusion rifle. Um. Wait, how much health is he regenerating though? Is it one piece All of or? it. All of it. Oh, just all. He just drops a shield, regenerates all his health. Maybe there's a way to disrupt that shield. Well, this guy's a dick. <laughs> I think you have to, have to try and find a way to disrupt the shield somehow. You see, you see, this is what I mean. You see this thing around him? This glowing yeah. thing? I figured it was something to do with that. It's like if I can get behind him, maybe. I'm trying to work out where the shield comes from. See, look. You see how it always it goes Wait, up. Wait a minute, he's not full health though. He's not fully regenerated. I know he just drops. It's unless I just have to keep keep shooting him. Uh, yeah, and then he oh, there you see full health again. Oh, that's. Um, yeah. See, he's immune. There's got to be a trick to this. There must be something I'm missing. I'm supposed to try and keep shooting the shield and see if it eventually goes down. This is what I mean, though. He just drops the shield and it's just so frustrating. Yeah. See if you can just put the shield just by shooting it. That's one of the things I can actually think of. No? That thing just Let's bounces see. off it. Finally, I have to. You have to like stun him. But that, I did that like several times. I hate those things, whatever they are. The, uh, the not the, the not the, the thralls. That whatever that boss is, I don't want to ever fight it again. <laughs> but that was fun. Oh, I still have to keep him stunned. Yeah, but I'd already used my super to constantly stun him, and that didn't work last time, which is weird. Must, it may, maybe there is it, is it is like new release stuff maybe it's just it could be buggy it could be that I was just missing a trick 
doesn't matter. Yeah, he's just after you're just missing a trick. It doesn't matter. He's dead now anyway. <laughs> um, just it just took me ten minutes. Um, but that at least they've given us a difficult boss because sometimes sometimes what bothers me in a game is if a boss is literally just a bullet sponge. Yeah. If there's a challenge to be had about working out how to kill the boss, I'd much prefer that. Like this thing, I, I've got a feeling there's going to be a trick to this. Savathun's Witness. But yeah, um, what I was saying about the Nordic deck is, as I say, it's like I preface it in the video, it's like I'm not making this to be a tier deck or a me super meta. It's something I'm going to take to my locals for fun. Yeah. It's like, I'm not saying it's going to top, but, you know, the the old the old Nordic deck did perfectly well in tournaments, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was it never won the tournament, but, you know, I got into, like, I, you know, I, I made the top cut a few times with it. <laughs> and it's like, it's not bad. And that's what I mean, like, the new cards have only made it better, which I like. They've only made it better. Like Alvis and Golvig have given it some more, mu well, much needed consistency. Yeah, the I noticed. I noticed you uh, mentioned. I noticed you mentioned EDO in the video as well. <laughs> I mentioned that. I, yeah, it's like EDO, EDO is going to be a thing. Uh, and I'm and I and I'm and I mean I messed about with it earlier just against the AI while I was on my lunch break at work. Yeah. Um, just to test it against a bunch of random decks. Yeah, yeah, um, I saw you. I saw you on it. Yeah, it's like I was. A, it's like, and it was so. I tried it against. There was a Cyverse deck. Um, I tried it against the um, Mathmex and something else. Can't remember. Um, and I'm, and I think most of them it was where because I was only playing against AI, of course. But it's just a decent gauge of. What's this deck gonna look like in sort of your average gameplay? And like, I can only get I can only get certain AI decks to work. I struggled, and then I managed to get like the ones I wanted to work were decks that were de hard to play against, i.e., Altergeist yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah, I can get Cybers to work in a few others, but like in the end, I can't. There's some that don't work, and it's like um, one deck that I don't like playing against, and I. Is probably because I want to build it. Is the Dra Dragoon of Red Eyes deck? Oh, uh, yeah. I like that, but I like that just because it's Dark Magician. Yeah. And I've got a Dark Magician deck anyway. I can just put a Red Eyes engine in there, and I can make Dragoon really easily. Yeah, I haven't really played um, EDO online. I've pl I've I've not played it online so much. I've only played a few games online. I I mainly use it. Yeah. Versus your sort of standard AI for testing purposes, it's like I if only, I'm, uh, I only really got it to play. I only really got it to, like, to play it with you. I'm gonna say we will sort that out. It's like the one thing that I was gonna say is that like I I got EDO mainly just so I could play test for consistency. Um, so like, how does this deck look when I'm actually playing it, rather than just pl testing hands by myself? Um. How does it combat this? How does it deal with this? So it's like, rather than playing against... Before playing against actual players, I will always test it against AI. Because it's like, well, it has to be able to completely trample this AI before it's going to be worth testing against people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. If it can't beat the AI, then there's no point. So the prime example of that is, it's like, my sort of decks that I test against. Cyverse is like the first mark because they can be tricky but they're not difficult to beat. Um, and then I go with Mathmech because they can be really irritating to beat. Um, then I go with Altergeist because they're actually like a tier deck. Still. They're still good. Um, and then I try and play it against like rogue decks as well. Things like you know burn decks and stall decks and stuff. Like against the AI, mm. if it, and if it passes all those tests, I'm like, yeah, I would play this online. Because it's like, yes, that that means that I know it can combat pretty much every kind of deck. It has it has an out or it has a fighting chance against these things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If it's like yeah. if it's like I play a deck on Edo Pro 
and it constantly loses to Altergeist. I'm like, well, then there's a problem here with negate, isn't there? There's a problem here with if my cards get negated. Which means to me it's like it needs more power behind it. It needs more things for your opponent to think about than negate this effect and win. But but now there's a problem with that. Hmm. Is um there's a difference between um EBO Pro deck shuffling and IRL deck shuffling. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, because the EDO Pro is an algorithm and it fundamentally randomizes it all. Yeah. And then you've got people who could stack in real life. And shuffling in real life doesn't isn't easy. Yeah, one thing that frustrates me as well is that um, uh, there's. I was watching this um, this guy's video about tournaments and there's things you should watch out for at tournaments and ways that some players will secretly manipulate you. Yeah, there is. And it's like, what they'll do is there's this, there's this manoeuvre that they um, they work with where um, they have this trick um, which is where they will do this thing when they cut, when, when they, you know, when you've got, when you, um, when they give the deck to you so you can cut your opponent's deck. Deal all on, deal all on to one card and pick uh, it top. No, not not that. There's another one which they do, which I've, which I've been shown as well, which is where, what they do is it's psychological. They put an indent in the card, as in like, they, as in they don't mark it, but they'll nudge one card. Um, yeah. and it's slightly higher than the others and the reason they do this is because your brain will automatically go to the most comfortable place to put your hand so yeah. when there's a little indent in it your brain goes oh I'll just cut it here because that feels comfortable Yeah. so that's how they get you to cut it where they want and if you cut it where they want then they could have stacked a card at that cut mark yeah. And then if you do it that way, and there's and the, and they have stacked a card at the cut mark, then what happens is you put their you put their best card to the top of the deck, so they can't say that they're stacking. So it's like, well, no, he he cut the deck. That's why uh, my always push. That's why I always you know push the decks together before I start shuffling. Yeah. To make sure. It's interesting. I think that's one of the things Russell does, you know, how he stacks. Gets you to cut it in the right place. What the hell was that? Did you see that? I just died. <laughs> I have no idea what killed me. Oh yeah, speaking of video, did you um did you find out about what's happening with that? Um, I haven't found out much, but obviously I just wanted to talk to you about um obviously what what the plan is in terms of um when when you'd like to do that and stuff like that well i'm ready anytime anytime i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm already ready for that so yeah i, I mean i won't be streaming at the weekend because it's the first time me and chloe are going to be going out of the house together so i'm going to take some food somewhere and we're going to go to, to a pub afterwards for a bit yeah. Because Chloe's see, like not. A, yeah. That's on Saturday though, so. Yeah. See, like I said, like I said, I'm just waiting on you. Well, I'm I'm good to go on Edo any time. I built my decks in Edo today. So that yeah, I've got I've got enough decks to take you on. I'm just waiting on the. I'm just waiting on your word. Yeah, I'll go whenever. Like, <laughs> honestly. Um. I don't know how you find your friends on EDO. Do I, does one of us just host so and then what, the other joins? So what you do is, is you uh, one of us hosts a room. Yeah. And put and puts a specific and puts a random password for the room. Yeah. And then you tell me what the uh, room your your room is called, and then and what the password for that room is. Mm-hmm. Basically, I oh. did it with your friend on Magio Pro a few times. Yeah, of course. Well, accepts the gift. What's the gift? What am I being given? It's a branch. I have been given a branch. Yes, the branch of life. It's called. It's called pendulum. Oh no. 
Oh god, no. Clefort, no. <laughs> <laughs> Clefort PTSD. Uh, no, every time I, I honestly I use the AI to play quick Cleforts the other day and it get, I thought I thought I, I thought I was gonna have flashbacks. I was like, no, not this, please. Cleefort PTSD strikes back. <laughs> now, one deck I didn't like was Cleforts. I really didn't enjoy playing against them, not because no. I couldn't mm -hmm. beat them, just because they annoyed me. So much. Right, so I'll talk you through on what you do. You know, to set a room up. Mm -hmm. So you go to servers as soon as you load the game up. Mm -hmm. You click force. Yep. And then you go to bottom. Yep. So you go host. Obviously, you go like host name then password. You go password. Yeah. Host name, password. Put whatever you want in. Hmm. Click OK, and then you just give me all the information and <clears throat> how to get into that room. Oh yeah. And then I just join. I mean, we could always, we could always do like a couple of games this evening if you'd like. Uh, I'm up for a few games now. I'm not doing anything. That's fine. I need to hand in my quest <laughs> on here, and then I'll. We, I can always jump over to EDO for a few games. Um. Yeah. I need to just change a few details, of course, on the stream. Oh, yeah. When we swap I over. Know, I don't know if you can set it to EDO Pro, so you'll probably have to set it to just chatting. I, I would set it to just chatting for that, just say, um, <laughs> talking shit and playing children's card games, probably. <laughs> um, or just challenging to people to a children's card game on motorcycles. <laughs> card games on motorcycles? <laughs> you say. My favourite moment from the abridged that had anything to do with 5Ds was the bit where yeah. they were talking about starting a rock band uh. and it's like alright testing testing one two three Jack you want to test your mic okay testing <laughs> testing one two three and it just explodes <laughs> it's like that for me was <laughs> I, look I've got a shit tier sense of humour alright I'm very my favorite, much. My favorite is the magic one where he says, Yes, if you've been. Let's say you've been a bad Susan. You've yes, been a. If you really bad, it's a very bad Susan indeed. I like you, <laughs> tell him, Fluffy. Um, oh, yeah, my favorite bit is. My other favorite, main favorite is. Um, 